Tackling the cancel culture craze among the Nigerian youth. A rather disturbing growing trend among Nigerian youth, particularly the active social media community, is its tendency to ostracize and alienate members of the elite and political class and enforce such ostracization through threats and blackmail in what I consider a toxic case of cancel culture which ought to be addressed. The relationship between the Nigerian political class and her young population, particularly people of my generation, have not always been a great one. But much of that appears to have been hampered by the events of the NSAS protest and its ugly unraveling, which remains a sore point in relationship dynamics between the Nigerian political class and her bogging youth population. I think while the youth may have earned their grievances against the Nigerian establishment, the management and ventilation of same requires tact and wisdom. This is one gap which remains agape. Recently, I noticed how a group of Nigerian kit makers were literally hung in the sun to dry for honoring Vice President Yemi Oshibanjo's visit at the State House. Elsewhere, some elite Nigerian Nollywood actors were also at the receiving end of public opprobrium for daring to visit a former governor of Lagos State, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinibu. Still in the same fashion, some Nigerian celebrities were roundly celebrated on social media for rejecting Governor Babajide Sanwalu's invitation to a now postponed or cancelled peace work. And just the other day, a reality TV star, popularly known as White Money, received sticks for joining the Governor of Lagos State at a food fest. A common thread that runs through the instances explored above is the cancel culture mentality, aided by group thinking, social validation, and sometimes outright cloud chasing without more. The end game of the performative socio-political behavior is to be seen as being against the establishment to continue to enjoy the approval of faceless persons on social media, while missing the critical opportunity of engaging at the other end of the social equation to articulate their concerns and even negotiate a stake in the Nigerian power matrix. It surely beggars belief that a Nigerian youth who claims to have been systemically and structurally disadvantaged by her elite class does not want to be seen anywhere around them. This makes me wonder how we can be taken seriously, at times, in our serial complaints. I think it is high time we began to review our methods and perhaps begin to understand that socialization across all segments of the society is an invaluable tool in the power negotiation process. It is hardly thinkable that we can have a share of the menu when we are not even at the table. It is particularly infantile and ridiculous when we rob ourselves of the opportunity to have a seat at the table for mere social media validation. Surely, the Nigerian youth have a great numerical advantage to wrestle power from the current crop of leaders in the context of a democracy. But to achieve that, we must have to ask ourselves whether we really have interest in doing so, or are we losing ground to an influential group within this demography, probably more committed to finding the embers of the we versus them mentality for their own primitive, parochial, and primordial interests. So this is a serious flack against, yes. the, against the Nigerian youth. I don't, I, I don't know how it is received on the platform. I think cancel culture, though myopic, anti-progress, and not even in our own best interest, is something that we cannot cancel. It's something that has come to stay. And it's, make, it's being made easier with the, with the presence of social media or restricted yeah. access to the web. Yeah. Because people are airing their opinion without paying money. Yeah. So people are going to do that. So I don't think cancel culture would easily be cancelled. Yeah. However, we can do things differently to help cancel or minimize the impact of cancel culture. And that's by us being us and doing the right thing, irrespective of how this group of people would react. So if, if you believe, if you're being invited to that club, so that place where you think you will be ostracized, but you believe you should be there, you should trump it. 
by Trump, I mean Trump, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. just be you and do what you think is right because it's for the greater good of yourself and of course of everyone. Yeah. So I don't think we can cancel cancel culture. However, we can sometimes ignore it as leaders, as people, and do what is right, irrespective of what public opinion. Um, Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, you know, someone once said that if even if we wanted to, I mean, this was like a slightly older person in his 50s, like mid 50s. Yeah. He said that even if we wanted to take power from the current, you know, all the guys that's speaking to younger people, yeah. this was during the entire period, right? So there's a strategy, there's a way to go about it. Yeah. And you yeah. might go about it, so it's almost like a caterpillar knows that it's going to become a butterfly. But if a caterpillar tries to attempt a certain height, it has not been designed and built for, okay. right? Yeah. It could destroy itself. Yeah. But eventually, it will become a butterfly. It's a matter of time. So strategy is important. And I think this cancel culture comes from wokeness. Yeah. You know, woke people. And people don't have independent opinion. You know, I, I was speaking to I was speaking to someone conversing for feminism. So I said, okay, what really is feminism? Yeah. She was blank. No substance. Like, she was blank. So you don't even know what you're... I, I see a lot of your tweets, so you don't even know what is feminism. So that means you're following people that believe in it, but you don't know what really is it. So, I mean, it's the bandwagon thinking. Influencers say something, everybody backs that. Right? So, like... So if it's popular, it has to be right. Exactly. So, majority is opinion. Yeah. Like Julia said, I really can't control your behavior. I can control my response. You know, we can't control the cancel culture. We can't control that. If somebody is dumb and then becomes an influencer, he's going to be a dumb influencer. influencer. It doesn't change his thinking. Sure. Right? Yeah. So if the people that are becoming influencers are people that, you know, their ideology, their thought process yeah. is Shall flawed, they, they are going to drag a lot of people who do not have independent thinking with them. And that's where cancel culture comes in. Absolutely. I, I, I'm just to build on what Victor has said. I feel like the foundation is the lack of critical thinking. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people don't think yeah. fortunately that's the truth it's uh, assumption is the lowest form of um, knowledge, knowledge right? yeah. so um, a lot of people would rather assume a lot of people would rather let others think for them yeah. and it goes even beyond the political elites yeah it goes it's in it includes every other thing in life that mm -hmm. we do people would rather um, delegate that aspect of their lives to somebody somewhere and it's even seen across board in religious organizations yeah. in every form of organization that you yeah. get to find there's that yeah. group thinking mentality mm -hmm. and if you do not align with what the group says or what the group thinks then yeah. you are mm -hmm. different and because you are different we have to treat you differently mm -hmm. and in process of what's treating you differently means that i mean if you're giving someone a potential um, um, people that think this way certain benefits because you don't think this way you shouldn't get that benefit mm -hmm. that's 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 one way the cancel culture operates another mm -hmm. thing is that people don't forgive so I, I also look at cancel culture from the lack of forgiveness in the sense that so i've made a mistake in the past and you have judged me you have condemned me you have everything everything that can be said yeah. so you believe that my everything i've done that's the way it's going to be that everything i say that's the way it's going to be so you see examples in situations where certain people where certain people have done certain things and then and then when they come out to give it an opinion that makes sense mm -hmm. nobody wants to listen to them yeah. they're already cancelled so it's, it's just it's just it's just <laughs> still, going back, to, yeah. still <laughs> going back to they're still going back to that part of salo, salo, no, yeah actually. still going back to the part yeah. of you being able to think <laughs> yeah. and also being able to assess situations mm. yeah. independent of what has happened in the past yeah totally i totally agree with you whenever this uh discussion comes up what happened uh, at the crucifixion of jesus christ uh, comes to mind. I'm mm -hmm. uh, speaking about when uh, Pontius Pilate said, "Who should I release, Barnabas or Barabbas?" The crowd said, Barabbas. Barabbas or Jesus? Barabbas, Barabbas or, Jesus. or Jesus? They said, Barabbas. Yeah. Barabbas. Why? Barabbas. Yeah. You understand? So the crowd may not always be right, and I think mm. that's the message from this mm. advocacy. Mm. So Ruth is up next after this break. <laughs>